Due to the pandemic, we're hearing about people having more problems sleeping. We're joined now live by Dr. Raj. He's on the front lines of the coronavirus and also a sleep expert. Good morning. Good morning, Suzanne. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thank you so much for joining us. We're in a pandemic. How can stress and anxiety impact sleep? Well, you know, Suzanne, quite a bit, but it's a very timely interview right now. You know what's trending on uh, social media right now is the hashtag can't sleep. And when I think about my patients, I put them into two broad categories. People who've had, you know, sleep problems before COVID-19 and people who've never had a sleep problem and things are popping up. And what I see across the board is that everyone is now becoming a night owl, meaning that they're delaying their circadian rhythm. These are people that go to bed very late at night and almost wake up closer to the afternoon. And people who actually had this problem are doing pretty good because they're actually getting enough sleep time. But those who are now having this whole new sleep pattern, they're wondering what's going to happen when things get better and things will get better. So it is an important time to focus on things like your sleep patterns and exercise and diet and stuff like that. What are the easiest ways we can get better sleep? Well, I would say you should definitely have a set bedtime and set wake time. You should have a nice routine. And of course, you got to have be careful about things like napping during the day and focus on having exercise. But one of the things I've noticed, I don't know if you heard the same, Suzanne, is, you know, weight gain during this whole pandemic. People have been gaining weight. And because of that, it's what you eat, it's when you eat. And in fact, one of my sleep patients told me something that during this pandemic, it reminded him of being actually like a freshman in college. Mm -hmm. He had this freshman 15. And now during this pandemic, he's developing this COVID-19. And that's going to make things like sleep apnea worse. It's going to make him have heartburn at night. So all these things factor in. So sleep, diet, exercise, all of these are crucial to getting good sleep. Okay, so watch the weight, get some exercise. What about people like, I hate to say me and DeMarco, my co-anchor, and Danielle, <laughs> our weather caster. We're going to bed, you know, eight, nine o'clock at night, waking up at two, what do we do? So it's hard. You got to have a routine when going to bed. And some of the things that really work for some of my patients, because sleep is individualized, it's not going to work for everyone. But really that old adage of taking a, a hot bath, a hot shower has worked for some of my patients. Why? The body likes to cool down when you lay down. It warms up when you get up. So that change in temperature helps you sleep. And because it's a really stressful time for so many people out there, some of my patients have mentioned good things about weighted blankets because they're, the, the, they're lonely, they're depressed, anxiety, that's going on. It's not for everyone, but these are some unique things that I wanted to share with you folks today. So when should people take medications? I mean, oh, I, great. Yeah, I mean, there's I, lots of over the counter remedies that people do, but also Ambien. When do you get serious about meds? Suzanne, that is a great question. The answer is, you know, this isn't a time to try different things. I know people have been doing it. One thing that I noticed a lot is that people have been taking more melatonin than usual. And my tip for everyone listening today is, it's not how much melatonin you're taking, it's when you take it. It's all about the timing. And please be careful, everyone. When you're taking over-the-counter sleep aids, when you take a Advil PM, like, remember, you need the sleeping part of it, not that anti-inflammatory, so be careful what you're taking. If you're having sleep issues, you should definitely contact your primary care doctor, your sleep physician, to make sure you're doing the right thing. Ask okay. him about a glass of red wine. <laughs> yeah, what, how about oh, like a boy, glass of wine before I heard that bed? already. I, I, I heard that, you know. <laughs> and one, 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 you know, another thing, just sorry for interrupting, I've hearing a lot of that during this time is a lot of my patients have been having vivid dreams, a lot of nightmares, unfortunately, a lot of people are having PTSD. But I think one of the reasons I know DeMarco brought up was people are drinking more wine to help them knock themselves out. They get poor sleep later on in the light, and that can contribute to things like nightmares. Hmm. Hmm. All right. So what if we're going to have the glass of wine? <laughs> I love that we're staying with this subject. Have it earlier? You know, the, the answer is like we're talking, you know, watch what you eat, when you eat. So I'm going to say limit your caffeine earlier in the day for wine. No one, you know, people have a glass of wine. What do you want to be careful? You know, with all this time right now, it's so hard to get that, that schedule. And I think the big thing I've noticed is not just drinking the wine at night, but being motivated to get up in the morning, be exposed to bright sunlight outside, of course, six feet apart, wearing your mask, of course. But when you get exposed to bright sunlight, it really sets your circadian rhythm. It resets it nicely. So you've got to have that motivation to get up and don't hit that snooze button. I know people are doing it out there. and I've done it a couple times myself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Raj. We could do the rest of the show with you, but of course we have other Yay. things to get to. <laughs> we you love so you. We love much. you, Dr. Raj. Thank you <laughs> so do. much. You're really welcome. You're welcome. Dr. Raj. Thank okay. you.